Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to tell you about antifibrotic treatments. Now, antifibrotic treatments are prescribed generally for patients who suffer with pulmonary fibrosis or lung scarring. This is another popular term of how to refer to this condition. There are many conditions associated with pulmonary fibrosis, things like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or other conditions that can be immunological in nature, rheumatological disease that are associated with lung scarring as part of that disease process. Sometimes it can be related to environmental agents that cause fibrosis and then that fibrotic process, that scarring of the lungs become worse, becomes worse and worse over time. And then there are these medications that we can use to slow down that process. So this is antifibrotic medication. Now antifibrotic medication does not reverse the fibrosis. It does not cure the scarring because the scar is a scar. Unfortunately, we don't have very good treatments to for that at the moment. There is research in this area. Hopefully one day we'll be able to reverse fibrosis, cure fibrosis, but at the moment we are in a position where we can give these medications that slow down the decline. So this is important to realize if you're thinking about a condition that can progress over time. So if you're on this medication, potentially you could be better off in three to five years compared to someone who doesn't take the medication. So that's where the effect is seen. Now, this is really hard to explain because if you think about it, you may go on a medication that may have some side effects. You may not feel better. But actually, the prize is that in a few years time, you would be better off with the medication than without. So this is quite difficult to explain to patients sometimes. But these are the antifibrotic treatments that we have. So when are these medications prescribed? I think that's really important to mention. So normally, they are approved for a few indications or conditions where they have been shown to work. So the main indication for antifibrotic treatment is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. I've spoken about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in other videos on this channel. It is a condition where we have lung scarring, but we don't know the cause. We have looked into it, we've run tests, etc., but we can't really put our finger on what caused the scarring. And it is a condition that can progress over time, so antifibrotic treatment is indicated in this case. The other situation is when we have lung scarring of a known cause, potentially in relationship to a condition such as rheumatoid arthritis or something else, some other condition that affects other organs of the body, but also causes scarring in the lungs. And then we can demonstrate that over time, the radiological patterns in the lungs on the chest CT scans are getting worse. The lung function is getting worse. The symptoms are getting worse. If we can demonstrate that, we call that progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease, which is a term that just says that the scarring is getting worse, basically. In that situation, again, one of the antifibrotic medications, because there are two, and I'll tell you in a second which one they are, that medication can be used in this indication, in this situation, to slow down the progression of that fibrosis that has a known cause. And then there is also another condition called systemic sclerosis associated interstitial lung disease, or SSC, ILD, systemic sclerosis associated interstitial lung disease. So this is a specific condition. I've spoken about systemic sclerosis in another video on the channel. It's basically a condition that generally affects the skin. It causes hardening of the skin, fingers, you know, maybe around the mouth, maybe in other parts of the body, and it also affects the lungs. It causes scarring of the lungs. So in that situation, again, there have been studies that have shown that antifibrotic medication, one of the antifibrotic medications can slow down that process in these, this group of patients. So these are the main indications when antifibrotic treatments may be available. So which medications are available? I think this is the next step to talk about. So there are two medications available. One is called pyrfenidone, pyrfenidone, and the other one is called nintedanib, nintedanib. So I'll maybe put the uh, the names in the description of the video below if you want to actually check what they are called, how they are spelled, if you want to look um, online and find, do your own research. So um, there are no head-to-head -head comparisons for these two antifibrotic agents, so these two different drugs, so we don't really know which one is the best to use, but they are both approved for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or IPF. So in that situation, we can use either of them. For the other situations that I mentioned before, generally only nintedanib can be used. So this is just how the research has evolved to this point, what data we have available. It just shows that prevenidone and nintedanib can both be prescribed for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, but nintedanib can be prescribed in other situations as well, where we can demonstrate that the scarring process is getting worse over time. So what do antifibrotics do? So like I mentioned before, they do slow the progression of the 
it's fibrosis of the scarring of the lungs so if you imagine you start off with scarring in one part of the lung or you know generally it starts on both sides and then it tends to progress and harden more and more of the lung so if that's what's going on these medications can slow down that process to buy more time they do not cure the fibrosis that do not remove the scar unfortunately but they can maintain an adequate lung function for a longer period of time so this is where we see the effects longer long term so in a few years time are there side effects yes unfortunately both medications have slightly different side effect profiles there, but there can be some side effects despite the benefit of prolonging um, and of maintaining lung function for longer and slowing down the decline of the disease they do have some come with some side effects unfortunately so for nintedenib generally we do expect sometimes to have some digestive side effects such as diarrhea there may be weight loss and appetite changes there may be a rare risk of increased risk of bleeding, especially in patients who are on blood thinning medications or anticoagulants. With perfenidone, the other medication, this side effect profile is, uh, profile is slightly different, but generally we may expect a little bit of nausea or digestive issues. The appetite may change a little bit. Um, there may be a photosensitive rash, so this is important to mention with perfenidone. So people who are on perfenidone need to wear sunblock, SPF 50, to prevent this photosensitivity rash for, from coming on because it's quite hard to get rid of afterwards. And then it may also cause a little bit of fatigue. So these are basically side effects that we may expect with these medications, but generally it's a bit of a trade-off. It's a risk-benefit discussion whether the patient should go on the medication. It's a patient preference which one to go for, if especially in the case of IPF where we have access to both medications. Whereas in the case of progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease if we demonstrate that the disease is progressive and we want to to prescribe an antifibrotic we would have to choose nintetinib in that case at this stage now the research may change in the future so the indication may change so if you're watching this video later please check with your doctor what the indications are for antifibrotic medications or whether other antifibrotic medications have been approved. So sometimes it helps with the side effects if we take the medication with food. This is something that I can mention. This is something we then generally recommend in clinic. And then if you are on perfenidone, generally to use sunscreen, this is quite important. We tend to emphasize this quite a lot to prevent that rash from happening because it can happen and it can be a little bit difficult to, to get rid of. So just to conclude, Antifibrotic medication is not for everyone necessarily, but it has a chance of slowing down the progression of fibrosis if that progression is demonstrated, regardless of the cause, or in this other condition called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which we know is a progressive disease where we have lung scarring, we don't know the cause, we can't identify the cause, we expect that it may progress. If you have this label of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, then either of the agents can help, but basically it's a question of risk benefits, it's a question of your own preferences, if you want to go on treatment or not, whether it would affect your quality of life or not, what is the life expectancy, other things can come into play. So it's a difficult, nuanced discussion. In the UK, we have the help of our specialist nurses in interstitial lung diseases who counsel patients regarding antifibrotic medications in other parts of the world. You may not have access to, to nursing support, but you may have access to your doctor or some other member of the healthcare team who will advise on how to take these medications, how they can be implemented in your care, incorporated in the management plan. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below because I really like to create these videos for you and help you learn about lung disease. All the best and good health.